the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the most popular, the highest grossing, and when it comes down to it, a franchise that has influenced so many movies to come. It is truly a franchise like no other that has made an impact on cinema. However, in my opinion, and probably many others, it has gone down a painful, painful decline of losing what it truly was, losing what truly made these movies great, what made us love them, what made us had so much enjoyment and fun when watching them. Now, of course, there have been some sparks of light in this darkness of painful mediocrity, but for the most part, it's just the same movie over and over again that we keep getting in this blockbuster template. Here, I'm going to discuss why the MCU has painfully been declining. And maybe I'll even come up with a solution or an idea of how they should fix it. So this is the painful decline of the MCU. This video will be split into two separate parts. The, the reasons why the MCU has declined and the problems I've had with their most recent movies. And how they can maybe fix this and go in a direction where we get more intricate Marvel films. So without further ado, let's get into it. Why are these movies so short? Now it's clear why they're doing this. I feel like the main reason why these movies are so short now is because Disney is for some reason trying to make their Marvel movies even more accessible to other audiences so that they make more money even though they're already insanely successful and Endgame was three hours and it is like the highest grossing movie ever i don't know why they would decide to make these movies even shorter it just doesn't make sense to me and you might think well maybe it spends all of its runtime you know doing what it needs to do and maybe these movies are just short because they don't need to be any longer well i, I would very much argue with that because all of these movies feel so hollow and empty and really just need you know more substance and more things to care about it all of these recent movies that have been so short really lack character and lack story and are not able to, you know, flesh it out because they're so short and not long enough to fully progress the story, progress the characters, and try to come out with its overall meaning. Remember Captain America Civil War? That movie's around like, what, two and a half hours? And you want to know why people love it and why it was so successful because it took its time to flesh out the story it took its time to progress the characters to progress everything and overall made one of the greatest mcu movies in my opinion it was also insanely successful but also appealed widely to critics because it took its time these movies don't feel like they're taking their time they feel so rushed and so unprepared in so many ways that it really takes away the life and the, the substance of these movies. Let's take a movie like Thor Love and Thunder, for example, which, fun fact, inspired this video in a lot of ways for it to, you know, co come out. Thor Love and Thunder is a movie that is around 90 minutes if you take out the post-credit scenes as well as the credits as a whole. It is, it's around a 90 minute movie. But the thing is, it doesn't really take its time to flesh out the substance, flesh out the characters, flesh out the stories. If anything, it just feels like we're going from scene to scene without really any progression. It just feels hollow and it feels like it's trying to rush through the story and trying to make it too accessible, too fun. Not exactly too fun, but it's trying to make it in a way where it's fast paced for everyone so it's easy to consume even though these movies already were very easy to consume at much longer lengths but at the same time were still good movies 
Thor Love and Thunder is hard to call a good movie because it doesn't take the time with everything that it has. It all just feels so blank. And that's my problem with these movies. Doctor Strange 2 is a movie that I have a lot of love for in certain ways because of the way it, you know, it takes certain ideas. But however, it's not long enough to flesh all these concepts and ideas out fully. I wish Doctor Strange 2 was a longer movie because if it was a longer movie, I'd have more time to enjoy everything about it. I'd have more time to care about these characters. I'd have more time to care about Doctor Strange's arc, which feels so rushed through this movie because it's trying to be way too short. It's trying to be way too accessible for us to really take any of it in. For us to take the story in, for us to take the characters in, it all feels like a massive roller coaster ride, which we will talk about how these movies truly do feel like amusement parks very soon as well. But overall, I don't understand why they're trying to make these movies shorter when already they were accessible, when already they were, you know, widely loved with being longer. You had a movie that was three hours long once again, and it made over a billion dollars. It is your highest grossing movie and one of the highest grossing movies of all time. I don't understand this. Why would you make them shorter? It doesn't make sense. No matter what, the MCU is going to make money. No matter what, they know that even if they don't try, they can maybe, you know, crack the $500 million mark easily. But what I don't understand is why you wouldn't just take your time. Just take your time with the movie. Whatever, let's move on to the next reason. Visuals are a very important thing in the MCU. They help to articulate what the characters are feeling as well as the world around them. The reason why I wanted to talk about this is because Marvel seems to be uninspired with their visuals. Because they are trying to be consistent, they typically choose a bland camera with not very interesting visuals, with typically ugly backgrounds, and poor color grading. While there have been exceptions like Thor Ragnarok, the original Thor, and No Way Home, for the most part, the visuals in MCU films are either really bad or just okay. Now many of these movies can get away with not having great visuals because of their characters and story. Infinity War may look visually dull, but since the visuals aren't too bad and because it helps to build Thanos as a villain and has a great story, the visuals are not as bothersome. However, when it's a movie like Black Widow with no great story or characters, it's a lot more evident of how dull the visuals can be. They all feel so bland and lifeless to the point where we don't feel anything. I can't feel the quote-unquote emotional scenes of Black Widow because the visuals are boring. Whenever there's a fight scene, I can't feel the tension because the visuals won't make me feel how tense it is. This isn't just because of Black Widow, however. There are many, many other MCU movies that feel this way, such as Endgame or The Incredible Hulk, which might be movies I don't exactly hate, but because they're so dull, I can't really love them because they just feel generic towards me at certain points. Now I could go on forever, but I would just be repeating myself. So anyways, next reason. Now I don't want to harp on this too much, but the characters in this decade of MCU films has not been anything compared to the last decade of MCU films at all. Besides in No Way Home, all of the MCU characters in the most recent Marvel movies have been former shelves of what they would have been last decade, because last decade for the most part, besides a couple exceptions, they had at least arcs, they had development, you cared for them, you related to them. They felt like real people in a way. A lot of them did. They felt relatable and down to earth, and now it feels like they don't have much of a personality or a character anymore. And Doctor Strange, in the original, there was so much, you know, story. There was care to his character. And now it feels like, while there is definitely a, some of that, I'd say, not nearly as much as there was in the original. Not nearly as much as there needed to be for you to really 
understand him as a character. It felt so, you know, non-existent to the actual story that it just didn't really work overall. And then Shang-Chi, who's a character I do not care about at all. I did not care about the movie he was in, and it just overall was a boring character. Also, there's Black Widow, who was a character that in that movie, she just felt necessary they tried to give her an emotional backstory but it overall wasn't able to work because the movie plot felt so detached from her character i think what you've kind of noticed is a lot of times when it comes to their character arc a lot of times the story has something to do with that in one way or another for example in spider-man homecoming you know the villain is the father of Peter's love interest. There's tie-ins there. There's, you know, actual stakes there. There is ways that the father is, you know, connected to Peter's life, which makes it interesting. Also, then there's Captain America's story in Captain America, the first Avenger, where while it is about this story about, you know, defeating um, the Nazis, it's also about a tragic love story as Captain America dies and loses the one that he loves. It's a tragic story at the same time. We see his, you know, character arc as he's progressing throughout the story, and then we see him lose the person that he loves the most, which is just as sad. The thing is, there was relatable moments to these characters, as you, you know, might seem to notice. Like I said before, Captain America lost somebody he truly loved and cared about. In Captain America Civil War, while it is this massive battle, at the end of the day, it's a political disagreement between two different parties. If you, you can look at it as that, and you can look at why each person would be on each side. That is something that now with the MCU, they would never be able to do because of how intricate those characters were. They were characters that had distinct personalities, distinct backgrounds, and had distinct opinions on certain things. So it makes sense why they would be on each side. They made it in a way that it made sense because we knew and understood these characters. You can't do that now in this decade with these characters that have been introduced because we don't really know them all that well. We don't understand them all that well because we haven't spent enough time to understand them. You see where I'm going with this? You see how all these things tie together? But because the runtime in a lot of these movies is so short, we don't understand the characters. And as a result, it just feels rushed because these movies feel so rushed. We don't really understand the characters' arcs. We don't get the characters at all. So once they introduce these new characters, I don't care as much because I don't know them as much. I don't know them like I know Captain America, like I know Iron Man, like I know S even Spider-Man, even, even in the first two, even in the first two compared to what we are getting now. This is probably the most important thing I have to talk about in this video because it is so crucial and important to the MCU's decline, in my opinion, in quality. And there's so much to dissect, so let's get into it. Originality in film and in franchises especially is something that is very important. Having a voice for your movie that seems unique and different really could skyrocket it as a great film. Sometimes Marvel has done this in the past with movies like Captain America Civil War, Ragnarok, and many, many movies that have felt like they did also tie into the story, but also felt like they were their own unique thing at times, which made them feel like they were something special. However, that has not happened really in most of the recent MC movies besides, of course, Spider-Man No Way Home. I have not seen Eternals. I don't want to because I know I'll probably have the same opinion on it as everybody else. I have no reason to watch it. But all those other ones I've seen, such as Shang-Chi, Black Widow, 
Thor 4 are all films that lack originality and taste. They all lack their own voice. They all lack their own sense of purpose. They all feel like a corporate product to the MCU and really nothing more than that. They don't feel like movies. They really truly don't. The MCU has at least had their films, at least with their good ones, feel like they're their own film sometimes. With the way, you know, with, with sometimes with the cinematography, and with the way things are written and such, they still feel like a movie. They still feel like a film that is somewhat original with what it's trying to do. However, it feels like they're just trying to, like, build these bland, generic stories and these characters with no meaning and purpose at all besides to make money. And that's the sad part, is because they don't care about bringing in, you know, some original directors, even though they have the money for it. Even though they have the money for some of the biggest directors in Hollywood to direct their Marvel movies. They could probably get someone like Steven Spielberg to direct a Marvel movie. I don't know how much he'd agree with that, but my point is, they can get high-caliber directors to direct their films because Disney is a powerhouse. The reason why they don't want to do this is because... They're afraid that if it's too original, it won't appeal to everybody. They want their movies to appeal to everyone, so because of that, they play the insanely safe route, which causes their movies to still be successful, but to sacrifice quality. So really, because in the end, Disney is a company. They want money, so they will sacrifice stuff such as passion, care, so they can make more money. Which really is sad because a lot of that has been with the MCU. It has consumed the MCU in my opinion. And has consumed a lot of Disney in general. I haven't really liked the Disney movie. Of course besides Encanto. Since a while. Encanto is the first Disney movie I could say I really really liked in a while. Original one. Original animated one. Pixar. Well I haven't seen their couple of recent films you could definitely debate that there might have been a bit of decline and you can tell some of them seem to lack a little bit of originality such as onward as much as i like onward there's definitely some very generic plot points that are supposed to appeal to a wide audience that's the problem with disney and that's especially a problem with the mcu because they are sacrificing all these great characters that could you know be something unique be something different be a turnaround for the mcu and aren't making the sacrifices to make something original. They aren't trying to sacrifice anything. The thing is, Disney can't really sacrifice anything because they have so much money that even if they have a movie that was risky and bombs, they're perfectly fine. However, they don't want to take that risk and continue to do the same thing over and over again, which causes their movies to not be as good and seem formulaic. Now the question is, how do we fix it? How can we make the MCU feel more original and unique again? How can we have them take more risks like they were able to do in the past before, especially when this whole thing started? Well, I think first off, they should start getting in more directors that have their own unique sense of style. Add more people like Sam Raimi into the MCU. Add more bigger director names that also have their own unique sense of style and their own unique sense of just o overall uh, flair, I guess is the best word to say that. Another thing I think they should do is take more risks with different characters. I know they're trying to do that, but also maybe they could try to take a risk with Deadpool, but maybe try to make it, I don't know, rated R or something, or just try to do something crazy. Try to make these... Try to use these wild, unpopular characters and make unique movies with them. Make unique films with them. And try to just make something interesting. Make something that pops compared to their recent work that hasn't been as interesting. Also, pick different stories. Pick stories that aren't as bland, generic, and formulaic. And try to, like, you know, just pick some stuff that's more unique in general, including the characters as well. Another thing, I think they should tone down the jokes a lot 
In fact, I think for a lot of their movies, they shouldn't really have jokes like this. I feel like these jokes should be eliminated. The only time we need jokes in an MCU movie is when it fits the character. For Thor, it kind of does make sense because he is someone that kind of jokes around to hide from pain. At least it that's what it seems like sometimes, especially in Thor Ragnarok. I felt like that was, you know, shown, in my opinion. Or maybe if they're going to add Deadpool, it would make sense to add jokes and humor into the mix. But if it's some character like... Um, I don't know. What would be a good example? If it's a character like uh, Fantastic Four, for example, like if it's Reed, don't have jokes. Don't have jokes for him at all because he's a serious character and it would not make sense. Only add jokes for characters that to where it fits their personality, in my opinion. Overall, I don't have that many ideas. This was just kind of a small segment of the video of just things I would like to see be improved in the MCU. But overall, I'm disappointed in what the MCU has become as of now, as of recently. I feel like they can do better. I feel like they should do better. And I hope they do better.